Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, it's the year 5781. You can see Jesus, the depiction of Jesus, uh, which is very important. That's what we read. And then you can see the goat, which is uh, sacrificed on this day. You can see far away on the old rugged cross, beautiful image. And then there is the priest taking the incense from the altar. What is the altar called? That's what I was, my question was. <laughs> Altar of incense? Yes, golden altar of incense. So how many altars do we have in the temple? Two altars. Who was that? There are two altars. One is outer altar of sacrifice and then the golden altar of incense which is in the holy place. And there is the priest taking the incense from that altar to go into the most holy place, okay? All right. <clears throat> What's Yom Kippur? It shows the day when, you know, about, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope many of us have seen the Ten Commandments. Moses, uh, this is one film which uh, ministered to me personally, seriously. When, when I saw Moses coming from the uh, Sinai, I felt something, goosebumps, you know? Uh, I don't know how many of you, felt that but uh, yeah so the first time when he came with the tablets uh, the Israelites had the golden calf incident and that was in Tisha B'a, uh, around that time uh, and then uh, after that he breaks the tablet and he uh, makes the uh, people drink it and there was a plague then and again he goes back to the uh, presence of God he goes back to the presence of God and he brings back two stone tablets again, which is written by God because of God's forgiveness on the people of Israel. God forgave them. And that's why he came back with the, uh, you know, tablets, uh, stone tablets. And this Yom Kippur shows that your sins are covered. Amen. Sins are covered. So that's what happens in Yom Kippur, where people yell and cry and repent. Their repentance is not like how we repent in our heart. No. So today I want to just explain to you what their repentance looked like because we are inherited from the Jewish faith. So it's the holiest day in Jewish calendar. It's the holiest day. That's from today evening to tomorrow evening. It's 26 hours of fasting. Many of them do not even drink water, but they will just, uh, through the night, they will cry, cry and cry, yell and pray. It's also called as the day of atonement. Sabbath, Sabbaton means Sabbath of Sabbaths. It's, it's a day of rest. It's just time for uh, crying and praying. And uh, Moses comes back after getting the second set of tablets. So this is just a video of what happens in the Western world. Kindly see. <laughs>
to show you what happens on the western wall now uh, when jesus was on the earth he would he would have come like a small boy while he was you know, till 30 and 31 32 33 right? so even paul uh, they all must have observed the day of atonement they have observed because as religious jews they have to do that uh, but uh, remember jesus must have come and he would have been telling uh, that uh, he is the one who is going to be it's all standing as an image of jesus now friends what i'm trying to tell you is all what they are praying is the torah the bible the the the, the you know the uh, the old testament they say about the prophets and all those things but i want to tell you your prayers are even more powerful because we know jesus Amen. and how much more we should lift our voice and pray my my thing is that we all pray very uh very piously very what do you say uh, we will not even hurt a mosquito but i think we have to uh, cultivate that habit of little bit yelling and praying and louder prayers uh, that the enemy will tremble hallelujah the enemy will tremble when the weakest of saints is on his knees amen so that's what i just wanted to show you we went there uh, brother prabhu took a video i wanted to show you that i didn't get it yesterday uh, but uh, it was a beautiful time when we went to the wailing wall amazing experience in night in jerusalem god willing after the corona is over we will plan to go one more time hallelujah what's this day all about uh, the holiest place in the world you know israel is the holiest place they, they, that, that's a truth that that place that's why god asked Abraham to come from Iraq to the promised land it was from Shinar some area in Iraq Baghdad that area he had to go to that place which God was showing him and uh, the Hebrew commentators believe that uh, God brought Adam all the way back to the garden of Eden that was what it is all about so the holiest uh, country probably is Israel and the holiest city is holy city is is yes. jerusalem 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 and inside jerusalem the holiest place is the men, temple mount not bethlehem temple mount temple mount uh, and uh, they they say that it's at that same place where the altar was of the and that uh, most holiest place is that place where the ark of the covenant was kept so the holiest place is there and then there is the holiest day once in a year not every day is holy that's what they believe the holiest day the holiest time in the today is tishrei 10 i think tishrei 10 and uh, that's the day after you know from uh, now last week i told you about uh, the fall feast uh, so after uh, passover uh, passover after passover the 50th day is pentecost and uh, uh before this was uh, uh you know uh, which was the feast rosh hashana and uh, rosh hashana uh, the after rosh hashana 10 days uh, the 10th day is the holiest day and that holiest day the holiest person not everybody is holy israel is a holy nation that's what they believe now when peter says you are a holy nation you should understand it's all about priesthood okay it's like what israel was to god in the old testament you are to israel you are to god now and still we fight for within ourselves i sometimes i feel how immature people walk they 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 do not have any idea of why god told them as a holy nation holy nation is a set apart nation like israel israel was the holiest nation and out of the holiest nation which was the holiest tribe the tribe of levi now out of the tribe of levi not all priests were out of the the priesthood kohenim priests there are rabbis there are priests priests also so the priests and out of the priests there is one most holy priest high priest so the holiest place the holiest day the holiest person enters the holy of holies to burn uh, i would say incense once in a year once in a year with the blood of the goat one for uh, there is uh, there are two uh, three animals there number one 
See, when we read the Old Testament, we think that Leviticus, that tem temple is all about blood and sacrifice. Who would like to be there? But it's a deeply moving spiritual experience. Because a person who comes to offer the sacrifice says, Hineni. Hineni means, here I am. You remember that? Hineni. Hineni is very important in sacrifice. Here I am. Every Sunday when you come, you say, here I am. Every Sunday you might be sitting before the laptop and before the open screen or whatever. But what you're telling is, here I am. I come not with my sacrifice, but I am a sacrifice. I come with Jesus as the sacrifice. I come offering myself. I come to you, Lord. I come to you. I come to you like how the Israelite came carrying an animal with him. It was a surreal experience when he saw the animal and his sacrifice. He thought all my sins are being covered. All my sins are being covered and the priest should know butchery. <laughs> Killing of the goat, applying the blood, uh, roasting the flesh. The priest should know that and they, and they loved the priest. They honored the priest. These days people, they, what they do they honor pastors? Do they honor men of God? These days we, rebel, we live amongst a rebellious generation. And my, friend, my, my challenge to you, parents, brothers and sisters, is stay strong, stay true to God's word. Stay true to God's calling in your life. Stay true to his, uh, uh, to his calling in your life. It's not about you or me or anyone. It's about Jesus. And we should, we should worship with a fearful attitude, with a reverential attitude. You cannot come just like that. When I read this, I tremble in my knees. When I read these scriptures, when I see what's happening in the temple, Holy Spirit. And the holiest person can enter the Holy of Holies just once in a year. The most high priest can enter once in a year. Imagine you are sitting under the presence of God always because of the precious sacrifice Jesus gave for us on the cross. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. If you believe that the kavod glory of God is over your life, if you believe the Holy Spirit anointing is over your life, if you believe that the cloud of God's glory is over your life, lift your hands and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That should be the thanks all about. It's not about COVID or anything. One day we are all going to die. Hallelujah. Amen. And they're fast. Two goats and a bull involved. One goat for the Lord for a sin offering and another goat is a scapegoat. So in this day, what they bring is there are two goats. Okay, one, the, the, that time Aaron puts a dice. He, he put the lot and one, per, one goat is destined to die. Another goat, uh, so with that goat, he will kill. The another goat is set apart there. Keep it there aside and he will do the offerings. He will take the blood. And uh, he will go inside for all the impurities. The priest is bearing the impurities of Israel in every way. That day, Yom Kippur is bearing the weight of all the Israelite sin. And he's going inside the, after uh, washing his hands in the basin. He removes his clothes. I will show you that there's a video there. You will understand it more. He goes to the holy place. He takes the incense. And very slowly, he goes into the most holy place. If God, if there is a strange incense, he will fall dead. Friends, spiritual life is not to be led in the way which we think. No. The word, the word, whatever you do, the word should back it. Whatever, whatever, either whatever you do should be accredited by God's word. If it is not accredited by God's word, it's a strange incense and whatever your praise and worship also will be a curse. Your praise and worship also will be a curse. Such a holy God we face. So when we live according to God's word and when we tell Jesus, now imagine that one goat is gone. He's that with, with, with that he, the bull is also there. So he uh, puts the blood and cleanses every article on that day. Then he comes back and then he lays his hand on the other goat and says all the sins of Israel are laid on this goat and one person takes it away to the wilderness. That is the scapegoat. It's a scapegoat. That's from there we get the word scapegoat. 
and that's a surreal experience once that goat is gone from there where it, it is led too far to the judean wilderness those who came with me will understand from jerusalem down to the wilderness and some traditions say they will push the goat from the edge of a cliff and once that is done they will say it is done and they will all rejoice because god has covered their sin and their names are sealed in the book of life sealed so in rosh hashana the names are written in yom kippur the names are sealed hey how many of you have uh, jewish managers here can you uh, i think uh, uh, in your company in your workplace i think yuvraj has one yeah yuvraj has a jewish man so uh, i hope you uh, wish him shana tova uh, wish him shana tova if he is a jew <laughs> shana tova may your names be described in the book of life all right the people of israel accept the atonement that covers their sin they accept that's done so after that they are so happy they enjoy and then next festival comes is the festival of tabernacles they come out of their homes they dwell in sukkahs in temporary tents beautiful community life they have they don't backbite they don't fight with one another they are all together one community yeah so beautiful amen praise the lord so they are happy that their teshua what is teshua teshua means tia what do you mean by teshua name what is teshua a uh, sacrifice no <laughs> anybody else repentance repentance yes repentance they are teshua they are happy that their teshua is accepted and their names are sealed in the book of life i hope you understood so that's how it is why why i showed you that image is every time we pray we undergo those things in our life we cannot pray just say we cannot come without the sacrifice of jesus to the presence of god his blood cleanses us from all of our past sins from our present situations and gives us cleaning if the blood of calves and goats could cleanse the conscience could cleanse out, outside how much more can the blood of jesus cleanse our conscience that's what hebrews we read so we do not so without the blood of jesus do not enter the prayer realm it's a precious place it's a beautiful place with the blood of jesus we enter with the blood of jesus we offer our sacrifices with the blood of jesus we say our hallelujahs lift your hands and say hallelujah by the blood of jesus praise the lord by the blood of jesus praise the lord hallelujah glory to god by the blood of jesus everything by the blood my family is sealed by the blood my ministry is sealed by the blood my city is sealed by the blood of jesus you come as a priest hallelujah with all respect to god some key terms which we need to understand this uh, uh, you know on on yom kippur and how it can bless us number one is repentance teshua they are filled with remorse for all their sins in the life of every child of god we should have those moments where we feel bad where we feel sorry we 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 live in a unapologetic generation have you ever seen a person telling sorry a politician telling sorry if a husband says sorry to their wives their family lives will be built if wives do the contrary if in church life when we are hurt or we just say a word of sorry forgiveness that that heals it but these days we do not like to co-live we do not we we like to go our own ways and that's where this attitude of remorse should be taught in your in your in your in your in your in your family if somebody is feeling uh, if you you know we should feel bad for the things which we have wronged children should feel wrong bad for the way they disobeyed their parents we should feel bad for the way in which we dishonored our god everything the word of god is clean and straight it's not that jesus uh, of course jesus died for our sins but that doesn't mean that we should not live under the uh, means we are in the flesh we should have a knowledge of our sins our sins because if it goes to a limit then it's up to we may we may fall under the judgment of god so we should have a 
life of introspection introspection have i wronged god have i sinned against god have i uh, i would say uh, it's a, it's a moment where we come to our senses we come to our senses if you take uh, luke chapter 15 and uh, verse 17 and 18 luke chapter 15 17 and 18 we know this uh, story about the son who went away the prodigal can somebody read it luke 15 17 and 18 when he came to the senses he said how many of your fathers hired servants have food to spare and here i am starving to death i will set out and go back to my father and say to him father i have sinned against heaven and against you and then keep going okay. i am no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired servants so he got up and went to his father that's 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 what repentance is all about that that attitude many of us don't come to our senses many many like how we say common sense is uncommon spiritual sense is much more uncommon to people spiritual sense i will go i i have sinned lift your hands and say lord give me spiritual sense spiritual common sense i have sinned and i will go back to my father that is and he went back to the father all this while he was enjoying his life full and he he lost everything he lost his money he lost his inheritance he lost everything and then the bible says he was eating pig's food and then he came to his senses let no none of you will go to the pig's food way none of you will go and launder or squander your wealth none of you will go away from the father's house somebody said amen they are filled with remorse so uh, it's a good feeling because you're going back to the father that's all don't be in guilt guilt and remorse are different remorse is feeling bad about a thing and going back to the father i will go back to my father repentance is getting back to the father today i want to tell you if there is any brother sister hearing me where are you and where is your father where are you and where is your father second important term is confession say confession 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 we read first uh, john 1 9 and 10 can somebody read it for me first john 1 9 and 10 we confess our sins he is faithful and just and we will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness if we claim we have not sinned we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us look at that if we confess or if we confess our sins what is confession confession is you are talking out your sin as you can hear it if you if tia wants to confess her sin just example okay taking tia okay so she uh, daddy told me to uh, do this and she goes to god and says lord i am sorry that i disobeyed my dad he told me to do this but i know you forgive me and then if she feels a little more remorse she'll come and tell me also so confess that's confession you you know what you're doing is wrong if we confess if we do not confess so on the day of atonement every jew confess their sins we have lost it. we have lost repentance we are not confessing also unless we confess unless we talk it out of our mouth we are sinners we are still down in sin realm so i pray brothers don't think you have no sin the bible says next verse first john 1:10 says if we claim we have no sin we make whom a liar we make god a liar we are all sinful but then if we confess our sins there is joy because he is our advocate he is our high priest he is our everything so let not the confessional life go from our from from our spiritual life we should confess we should confess our sins before the presence of the lord if we confess our sins there is healing and there is reconciliation look at psalm 51 and verse 4 how a confession looks like psalm 51 and verse 
against you, against you only you. have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Against you I have sinned, O oh God. When did we pray this last time? My question. Have we prayed this prayer? Have we prayed, Lord, against you I have sinned? Oh, we are all saved, sin, saints, Pastor. That's why we are going from sin to sin to sin. And if Jesus comes, we will not be taken up. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. Yeah, we are, we are all running that race to see Jesus, isn't it? If we are not confessing against you, I have sinned, O oh God. That brokenness, that it should start from all of us. Even in the day of atonement, the priest has to first atone for his sins and then only he can atone for others. So that sin and saving, uh, sanctification should be always there. Since we commit in our body, we confess and he sanctifies because he is there. James 5 and verse 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Uh, that's NKJV, I think. Okay. Uh, but look, look at what, uh, what confess your faults to one another. Say, if Brother Prabhu has something against me, he comes and says, Pastor, I had this, I felt like this, is it right? I say, Oh, did you feel that? I'm really sorry, Brother. But I didn't mean it. And he'll say, okay, but I'm, I'm, I, I just it may be a mistake. That's church life. Hey, I'm not a perfect pastor. You will not find a perfect pastor also. <laughs> if you are in search for a perfect pastor and a perfect church, I'm sorry, friend, we are living in an imperfect world, but we are trying to be perfect. But when there is an issue, we should face one another. Say face one another. Face to face. Say face to face. But what we will try? I don't want to see your face. I am going in my way. <laughs> oh God, save us. Oh God, heal us. So once that is happening, what happens? Healing will come. Healing is coming. Many of our sickness that we carry is because of the unforgiving realm which we are in. Yeah. Many, many sicknesses, physical sicknesses, weaknesses which we face also because of unforgiveness. We are not facing one another. Say facing, facing God and facing one another. We are all sick. So confess your faults to one another. And then when you pray, the prayerful prayer, the powerful prayer, the righteous prayer, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much is powerful and effective. The third, okay, uh, third important thing is resolve. But before that, confession, I just want to take you back to Luke 15. And look at what, what's happening there. Luke 15 and verse uh, 20 and 21. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Wow, look at that. Can you imagine? This is how when we face repentance and confession, he's telling, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be. The next verse is also good. But the father said, okay, I, I, hold on, hold on, son. Quick, bring the best robe. Once you come, it's best. Somebody said, Amen. Once you come to the Father's house, today you have come, you have come with your fellow brothers and sisters. You are getting the best robe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands and say, I am getting the best robe from my Father. I am getting the best robe. Next, put a ring on his finger. Hallelujah. Pentecostals, many people do not have a ring, but let us be having the ring from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ring on his finger. Sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of man was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. This is what happens on uh, Yom Kippur typically. And probably Jesus had this in mind when he spoke about it. We do not. Hallelujah. If you are blessed, say hallelujah. Amen. 
rise up and get to the father brother well we all should go to the father and when we come to the father it's the best 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 fat and calf you are celebrating there you are dead you are dead you are gone but when you are found in the father's house so father is happy when you repent your father is happy when you repent i'm happy when when my children say okay daddy i was wrong but if sometimes they say but but i think i did was wrong what will i think okay they they think they are right and i am wrong <laughs> when we when we do not confess we make him a liar and we live in darkness so let's get back to god every day every morning i like that song i don't know how many of you know that song have you been to jesus for the cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the lamb are you walking daily by the savior side are you washed in the blood of the lamb are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb homework for you at least one homework last week i gave genesis 22 rahul i want to appreciate you for sending only one person sent to me i was waiting for indra sister's drawing i didn't get it uh, Uh, then others also can do you know genesis 22 read meditate and say friends take your rabbi seriously i am a rabbi <laughs> i'm teaching you i'm like a rabbi take your rabbi seriously for your serious growth in your spiritual life amen well i am not a rabbi i am a teacher i am a pastor teacher that let that be okay pastor teacher uh i want to uh, appreciate all of you who take your spiritual life seriously plus ultimately what else we have what else we have last week i saw the very sad funeral of a man of god who planted thousands of churches around thousand i don't know how many in fact his wife was telling i just want to open and he, he it's not it's okay i i i i may have covid i may get I, it's not bad i want to touch him for the last time breaking the protocol they just gave one touch to see and then he was buried these days what else do we have still we make reluctant to come to the father's house every prayer meeting is your father's house experience write it down big bold every prayer meeting is a father's house experience which we sh- which i should not miss hallelujah you got it every prayer meeting is a father's house experience that i dare not miss so father is kissing he's giving everything and then there's the resolve after confession we resolve not to go back to the old ways we are ready for a clean start so today as today and tomorrow ends today evening to tomorrow as tomorrow ends they are ready they are thinking their names are inscribed in the book of life and they're ready for a new start i pray that every day we will have a new start not only on the day of atonement because jesus did it jesus paid it all hallelujah lift your hands and say every day is a new start every moment is a new start when i trust in the blood of jesus hallelujah every moment is a new start when i trust in the blood of jesus vinamrata write it down okay you have to bring it up yeah. so on rosh hashanah the names are written on yom kippur the names are sealed the names are sealed now another important issue is the book of life everybody say book of life okay. this is why all this rosh hashanah is also be a book of life Yom Kippur also is about the book of life. What is the book of life? Just some references I will give you. Jesus is telling in Luke ten and verse twenty. Can you read that? Luke ten and verse twenty. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. They rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Probably that was uh, Yom Kippur. We do not know. We do not know. now only we understand why well, is used to you names are written in heaven probably sometime during that time disciples went and cast out some demons and the demons went away they are so happy oh in my ministry demons are running you know pastor i am i am having youtube channel i have billion what you have one <laughs> i don't know oh. you know pastor i did this i did that demons ran away one when i when they saw me itself they came to me 
Okay, that sort of attacks we face. We feel so excited when demons fall. I still remember when I went to Nepal one day, and uh, there was a meeting, and uh, one girl came, manifested. She was in the choir. She came showing karate to me. Karate. I was like, oh God, I want to go back home. <laughs> well, I'm a teacher. I'm not excited against demons. So I said, in the name of Jesus, go. She is not going. She is again putting some stunt. Then I thought, okay, this is English is not happening. Immediately, one Tamil pastor came. Check, move it to Bobby Sas. I said, shut up and go. You know what? It went. <laughs> so I thought, hey, you pastor, you are talking in Tamil, and the, I started talking in English. And I think then I thought, okay, English demons are hard to go. Huh? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Or English is not. <laughs> Probably you should be comfortable with the language. But then she was. She restored at the afternoon. She sang back in the choir. She was healed. Let every demonic spirits go from your life in the name of Jesus. Do not rejoice that demons are subject to you, but rejoice. Why your names are written in heaven? My question, brother, sister, have you have that assurance that your name is written in heaven? You can have that assurance when you come to Jesus and you have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. When you have your place in the church, say local church. local church when you have an intimate relationship with jesus you can be sure that your names are written in heaven amen if you do everything and your name is not written in heaven it amounts to nothing read revelation 3 4 and 5 yet you have a few people in sardis who have not soiled their clothes they will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy the one who is victorious will will like that will be dressed in white i will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels look at that i will acknowledge his name between before the father and angels who he who overcomes he who do not hate he who hates the soiled soil in the garment your spiritual life you should take it very seriously not even a single mistake should happen say not even a single mistake i don't like a single mistake to come on my spiritual life that sort of if you do like that you will be like that priest linen garment that's what white he will be dressed in white and his name will be written in the book of life will, his name will not be blotted out so can the names be blotted out the name can be blotted out so if there if you if you like See, if you like being in the church, and if you like to watch Sun TV and Gemini TV and all those things, <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe our names will be blotted out. Yeah. Many church fellows, people are, many church people are unhappy because of the death of SPV. Uh, because of uh, he's a big singer, no. But then one another thing is they all enjoyed his cinemas also. <laughs> well, that's. we respect everybody's talents we are grieving everybody's grief but the thing is friend we should be holy and holy and holy righteous and righteous and righteous then your name will be written in the book of life you might be doing big ministry brother you might be doing big ministry you might be a big pastor or a big evangelist that doesn't matter there if you do, if you do not hate the garment stained with flesh we cannot walk with him white he in sardis there were some people who who were so righteous and jesus is telling they will walk with me their names i will not blot out from the book of life read philippians 4 and verse 3 philippians 4 yes. verse three. yes i and i ask you my true companion help these women till they have contented contented at my side in the cause of the gospel along with and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life look at that i ask you my true companion help these women so women are very important in the church never feel unimportant yesterday i saw a video in in, in kerala some two women went and hit one fellow who told some unwanted comments <laughs> against women uh, well uh, women are looked upon very down you know in many societies but in the church they are elevated there hi amen uh, i ask you my true companion help these women since they have contented at my side in the cause of the 
gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Paul knew very well that their names are in the book of life. How? Because they stood with the pastor. They stood with the man of God. It's a very important spiritual principle, brothers and sisters. I'm seeing many churches, many pastors tell me, Pastor, when we open, will people come? Even I am thinking, will they come? I don't know. We, we are all happy in our homes, relaxing. Uh, well, we may lose some. We may lose, I don't know. Some, some of them, we do not know where they are. Some of them have gone. Some of them are under a different pastorate. Praise the Lord, as, they are, as, as long as they are happy. Appreciate you, friends, for standing strong and staying strong. And I know that your names are in the book of life. But if you depart from me, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. So that's a principle, spiritual principle. Staying true with your spiritual leadership. Uh, especially in Yom Kippur, we should. Uh, I pray that all of the church will be loyal with the past. In every church, if you are a member of another church, you remain strong with the spiritual man of God. Come what may. Come what may. So, those names are in the book of life. When you, when you co-work, see, church is the place not to sleep. Church is the place to work. Say work. Work. See, it's saying who co-work. Rest of my co-workers, no co-sleepers. It is co-workers. Say, I am a co-worker. Keep your hands and say, I am a co- If you are not working till now, from today you are declared a co-worker. I am a co-worker with my pastor in the kingdom expansion. Amen. Hallelujah. Why is the book of life important? Revelation 2015. Revelation 2015. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Anyone whose was found not written in the book of life, they will be thrown in the lake of fire, which is called Gehenna. That's why the Yom Kippur is very important. Well, John saw it. He's thinking about the book of life. Book of life comes into uh, thought only in those days. That is Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur days. But friends, this is the reality of life. You have your Aadhaar number, that, that doesn't make a difference. But your name should be in the book of life. I, I remember a Malayalam song, I just sing it to you. Yeshuve ni sorgatil enja nama meludhi aru medu katai bhagya men sandosha means, Lord, you have written my book, book, name in the book of life. And I'm so happy. And nobody can take that right away from me. Nobody can take that privilege from me. Lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah.